Welcome to the Beamsville Church of Christ video ministry. Services are presented on YouTube, Facebook, and our website one week following recording. This week's video is titled Easter, The Resurrection. Thank you to Don and Rhonda for being part of the service. I'll be reading Romans 6, 1-5, following the opening prayer. Well, good morning. I'm pleased to, uh, to see you here. He is risen! He is risen awesome, thank you. Anyways, I am so happy to see everybody here this morning. Thank you for coming. Thank you for joining us. Uh, thank you to those who are watching us online later. Uh, we, are, we are just so pleased to be able to get together and, and worship God this morning. We have a very, very exciting announcement. Ellen and her girls are on their way. So they are expected, pending you know negative tests and travel and everything. They are expected on the 15th, uh, and, and we'd like to honor and thank Jeff and Jan for, uh, for opening their home to them. In relation to that, they are in need of a small fridge to, to support them as they are living in the basement, so please speak to them if you know of, of one of those. We won't really know exactly what they need as far as clothing and other materials yet. Once they get here, we'll have a better idea. We'll be able to ask more uh, about that. Daniel is hoping to move back to Beamsville and live with them. So if you know of, uh, of a living arrangement that would be suitable for two adults and two small girls, that would be very excellent to be made aware of that. So please, please keep them in your prayers as they're, uh, as they're traveling. We will go ahead with our annual meeting next week. Uh, we need at least 12 members of the corporation to be here. We can have up to about 35 people. If we got 35 people, that would be amazing. We need at least 12. So please, if you are a member of the, of the corporation, please plan to come next week. Happy birthday to Julie and Mike and Tess this coming week. And there are probably ones that we missed last week and that we'll miss next week. Happy birthday to you as well. Tintern this week is holding their first in-person services since they started their church building renovation. So we pray for God's blessing on their work in our broader community and that he will do great things with that new facility and with that church. I'd like to open with a prayer or continue with a prayer. So let's pray together. Lord, we meet this morning to lift our hearts to you in praise. Be the light in our lives as the sun rose on the day your son was raised by your power. We look to you as our powerful protector and guide through a dark and dangerous world. Mighty God, you were the one with power to heal. We pray for your healing in the bodies of those we love who suffer. We pray especially for Ruby as she undergoes treatment and, and for Gloria as well. Strengthen their bodies and spirits. Guide the nurses and doctors that they may be made well, if that is your will. Thank you, God, for opening the way for Daniel to be reunited with Ellen and their girls. Bless them with courage and your peace beyond our understanding as they set out this month. Thank you for blessing our congregation with the means and opportunity to support them. And thank you for Jeff and Jan and their gifts of hospitality as they open their home once again. As we move through our time together this morning, set our hearts and minds on you, your son and your spirit who makes us one. And through this oneness, we come to you in prayer. Amen. Scripture reading this morning is Romans 6. What shall we say then? Shall we go on sinning so that grace might increase? By no means. We are those who have died to sin. How can we live in it any longer? Or don't you know that all of us who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were therefore buried with him through baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too may live a new life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we will certainly also be united with him in a resurrection like his. Amen. Good morning, everyone. Even though we've done this earlier, I'd like to try it one more time, even though it was beautiful a few minutes ago. It's nice when everyone can participate. I just ask you to stand with me for a moment. Millions of people across the world are saying these exact words, and your response will be wonderful. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Amen. Please be seated. N.T. Wright, who is a wonderful theologian, tells the story of when he was in England not too many years ago, he was on, a way, on his way to a Good Friday service where he would be addressing many people in this particular church. His uh, plane was a bit late, so he jumped into a, a taxi, and the driver 
could notice that uh, this gentleman in his back seat, whom he didn't know, <clears throat> was a reverend, a minister. He had his purple gown on, and he had his collar. And he chatted with N.T. Wright for a while, and he said, uh, I see that uh, you're a reverend. He said, well, yeah, I'm, I'm a theologian, yeah. And he said, because it's Good Friday, I assume I'm taking you to a cathedral. And he said, yes, you're, you're taking me to a, a cathedral. And I assume that because it's Good Friday, you're going to be talking about the death of Jesus, but you're also going to be talking about Easter, the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And N.T. Wright said, yes, the two greatest events in all of the world, the death of Jesus for the forgiveness of our sins and the resurrection to say that life is eternal and that we're all part of it. And the taxi driver said, as far as I'm concerned, Reverend, if Jesus was raised from the dead, and I believe he is raised from the dead, everything else in life is just rock and roll. <laughs> rock and roll. And I have no idea what that means, except that it was obviously someone who, has felt, who felt light and joy in all of it. May not understand all the deep theological understandings of it all, but as long as Jesus was raised from the dead, I have hope. There's glory that we all participate in. The taxi driver was correct, and he will always be correct with the words that Jesus has been raised, and because he has been raised, we too shall be raised. But not just people, that all things will be raised, will be restored will be renewed. It's a wonderful passage, and I'm going to look at several passages of Scripture today, and I ask all of us to open up our hearts and minds to the words of, of Scripture. Revelation 21, verses 1 through 5. Beautiful, beautiful words. All things will be renewed and restored. The earth itself. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and there was no longer any sea. I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride, beautifully dressed for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Look, God's dwelling place is now where? Among the people, and he will dwell with them. They will be his people, and God himself will be with them and be their God. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain, for the old order of things has passed away. And then in verse 5, he says, He who was seated on the throne said, I am making everything new. Write this down, he said. These words are trustworthy and true. The reconciliation, the redemption, and the recreation of all things. And that's what we have to look forward to a renewal of all things. The resurrection reminds us that Jesus died in a body, that he was buried in a body, that he rose again in a body, and that he's going to return one day in a body in a new earth available for all of us. For many years, I grew up believing what a lot of people believe, that when you die, you die and you go to be with God, and that's your eternal place. Your eternal place is heaven. But scripture seems to indicate from Old Testament to New Testament that resurrection is for all of us. Just as when we're buried in baptism, they die, that, that we died to our sins and we've been raised to a new life. And Jesus says to us, all things will be raised. As I was raised, you too will be raised in a new heaven and earth. It's not, when you read the scriptures, it's not earth going up to heaven. It's the heavens coming to the earth and creating something all brand new. 
Is it difficult to grasp these things? It was really difficult for me for so many years to grasp it. And the more I read scripture, the more it makes sense that God wants to renew and restore what he always wanted to renew and store. That one day there will be no more sin. And that one day all things will be renewed. I heard a story this past week and uh, Barb and I like to watch certain television shows. And some of them are about house uh, resurrections, you know, renewed, restored and everything else. And I forget the names of all of them. But there was one that was just, we saw this past week and it, it grabbed my attention. But an older couple were downsizing. They had sold their large home, and they were looking for something smaller. And they came to this cute home. They both loved it until they went to where the washroom was. And she said, if I get these words exactly right, this is really old and yucky. <laughs> the washroom was not up to par. This is really old and yucky. And the husband calmly smiled and quietly said, Honey, after I restore it, it will be brand new and beautiful. It will be completely transformed. And I thought, that's our future a complete and total transformation of all things that God has always wanted. Because of the resurrection, various people talk about it. Scripture doesn't talk about the annihilation of all things. It doesn't talk about the destruction of all things. Rather, Jesus, Paul, Peter, John, and Isaiah all talk about the renewal the restoration, and the reconciled, and the redemption of all things. And because of the resurrection of Jesus Christ, death is no longer the enemy. Jesus said in Matthew 19 and verse 28, Truly I tell you, at the renewal of all things, not the destruction and annihilation of all things, but at the renewal of all things, when the Son of Man sits on his glorious throne, you who have followed me will also sit on these thrones. So way back, maybe some 800 years before Jesus even came into the world, Isaiah talks about this in Isaiah uh, 65. This is a wonderful passage of scripture. Isaiah chapter 65, verses 17 through 19. Now get this, some some 800 years before Jesus is born, and Isaiah is already talking about the redemption of all things, he says this, See, I will create new heavens and a new earth. The former things will not be remembered. I suspect he's talking about the Israelite captivity for some 400 years, the torture the horrible times Israel had to go through. And Isaiah now, through the Holy Spirit, sees our future. I will create, God says, new heavens and a new earth. The former things will not be remembered, nor will they come to mind. Be glad and rejoice forever in what I will create. For I will create Jerusalem to be a delight, and its people a joy. I will rejoice over Jerusalem and take delight in my people. And then these beautiful words that we've already read by John in the Revelation. The sound of weeping and crying will be heard no more. No more. Those things that burden us, no more. Those things that keep us up at night, no more. Those things that weigh heavily on our hearts, no more. That all things will be as God always intended it to be. I don't know about you, but I think the resurrection is a pretty good deal. 
And I think that's something that all of us can look forward to. Every day of our lives, no matter how terrible things can be, that we can look forward to what God promises. Let's face it, the entire world right now seems to be out of joint, not just because of the pandemic. This world is not the world God intended it to be and promised all throughout Scripture that he will put things to rights, that all will be renewed and restored, just as when Jesus died, it seemed all of life and creation itself was doomed to destruction. If Jesus can die, then all of us can die, and that's got to be the end of it. But then Jesus was raised from the dead, and hope has returned and is restored and is available for all of us forevermore. Life was renewed, and death no longer has dominion over us. And then these precious words, maybe the most precious words ever spoken, when Jesus said, can you imagine being there and hearing him say these words? I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me will live, even though they die. And whoever lives and believes in me will never die. And then he asks them the question that we ask ourselves. Do you believe this? Can you imagine? Colossians says Jesus created all things. And he sustains all things. And he says, I am making all things things new. You will be raised. And he asks them and us the question, do you believe this? And then, of course, they witness his death, and they witness his resurrection, and they witness his ascension, and they witness his presence in their life by the Holy Spirit, just as we do, looking forward to the day when all things will be renewed and restored. It is amazing that one of the reasons why on this day, Resurrection Day, when we ask people to stand and we ask people, do you believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God? Do you believe that Jesus died? And do you believe that Jesus was raised? We stand and say, he is risen indeed. Not just for me, but for my loved ones and all of creation itself, renewed, revived, and restored. So there's beautiful scriptures reminding us of this, even in our baptism, in our resurrection. And we often quote these scriptures when someone is baptized. Don't you know that all of us who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were buried with him in baptism into death in order that just as Jesus was raised from the dead, we too should raise to walk in a new life. The glory of God living in us. Our baptism isn't just being put underwater and coming out of the water. It is this it is this connection, it is this union with Jesus Christ. As he lived and died and was buried and rose again, we too die to ourselves to live a brand new life in him and wait for the restoration, the reconciliation of all things. I don't think it's maudlin to say that the world is out of joint. But someday... God will put all things to rights. That's an English saying. He'll make all things right. He will restore, he will renew all things, including each one of us. I'd never really thought about this before, but think with me. The Bible starts with new beginnings. You remember the first words of the Bible? 
in the what? Beginning. The Bible begins with new beginnings. The Bible concludes with new beginnings. I am making all things new. We have no problem believing that God created the world. But for some reason, when it becomes very personal to us, that God says, I will renew you and restore all things. Now it's very personal. And the question is, do you believe this? As Jesus was raised from the dead, when we take communion, it's because we believe Jesus is the Son of God. We believe he lived to show us how to live. We believe he died for our sins. We believe he rose again, saying that death is not the end. And we believe because he lives in our hearts. He is the ongoing resurrection in each one of us, saying that as Christ lives in us, we will live always because of him. I am the resurrection and the life, your life as well as his. It's just too much to comprehend. And so he says, Paul says, and we who with unveiled faces reflect the Lord's glory, we are, whether we know it or not, we are being transformed into his likeness with ever increasing glory which comes from the Lord who is the Spirit. <sighs> Truly amazing. We with unveiled faces, we don't really grasp it. We are reflecting the Lord's glory. We're being transformed into his likeness with ever increasing glory. And all of this comes from the Lord, who is the Holy Spirit. It's not just life after death, but it's life after life after death. He will not abandon us. He will not abandon his creation. All things will be renewed, as Paul says in Ephesians 1.10, that he will bring all things in heaven and on earth together under one head, Christ himself. And then Philippians 3, 20 and 21. But our citizenship is in Canada. Well, it is. But there's something bigger than that. Our citizenship is, is in God. It is in heaven. And we eagerly await a savior from there the Lord Jesus. We're waiting for him to come here, the Lord Jesus Christ, who by the power that enables him to bring everything under his control, listen to this now, will transform our lowly bodies so that they will be like his glorious body. I get the shivers just saying it. Our body will be like his body. Whatever that looks like. It will be like his body. Right now, as we live as Christians, we want to be close to Christ. At the resurrection and the renewal of all things, he said, you're going to resemble him. Our body will be like his body. Just imagine Christ's body. So if you will, I'd like to conclude by reading one more time, New Beginnings. I love the way the Bible was put together. It begins with new beginnings. It ends with new beginnings. Our life when we're born 
is new beginnings, but our life continues on as new beginnings. Revelation 25, and see now, based on the things that we've said today, if you would, put yourself into these words, because it really was intended for us to be in these words. The beginning of all things, the renewal of all things, the redemption of all things, the recreation of all things, the reconciliation of all things. And then I saw a new heaven and new earth. The first heaven and the first earth had passed away. No longer any sea. And you may be wondering about that. It's quite possible that people were terrified of sea creatures and didn't want to be tossed into a sea. That's just an idea. He said, I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride, beautifully dressed for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, look, God's dwelling place is among the people and he will dwell with them. All of my life, I've been told and I believe with all my heart that we're going to heaven. I think when we die, we are going to heaven, but that one day, that's not going to exist anymore. That one day, it's Christ, God, coming to the earth, joining together as one. Look, God's dwelling place is among the people, and he will dwell with them. We will be his people. God himself will be with us and be our God. He will wipe every tear from our eyes. There will be no more death. There will be no more crying. There will be no more pain. For the old order of things has passed away. And he who was seated on the throne said, I am making all things new. We're going to be with our loved ones who have passed. We're going to be with those babies that passed way too early. We're going to be with those babies that weren't quite born yet, but in our heart, they're still our babies. We're going to see our parents again. We're going to be with them again. Not just a quick vision, but the people whom you love the most. The people that you've only heard about in your family, who've loved God with all their heart. We will be with them. And then this. Uh, Don, yeah, it's God. Can you, uh, can I spend a couple of minutes with you just chatting? Yeah. One day. One day. Oh, yeah. How strong is the resurrection? It sums up life in every imaginable way for each of us. Amen. Well, if you've had goosebumps this morning through this sermon, I'm going to just carry on with basically the same topic and lots of scriptures and amazingly none of the same scriptures. At noon, the whole country was covered with darkness, which lasted for three hours. At about three o'clock, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, Eli, Eli, Lama Sebastian, which means, my God, my God, why did you abandon me? Some of the people standing there heard him and said, he is calling for Elijah. One of them ran up at once, took a sponge, soaked it in cheap wine, put it on the end of a stick and tried to make him drink it. But the others said, wait, let's see if Elijah's coming to save us. Jesus again gave a loud cry and breathed his last. Then the curtain hanging in the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth shook and the rocks split apart and graves broke open and many of God's people who had died were raised to life. They left the graves and after Jesus rose from death, they went into the holy city where many people saw them. And I think the graves opening is talking about the abolishing of death, but the part of this that I find, the symbol that I find most meaningful is the curtain that was hanging in the temple was torn in two because 
that curtain separated the people from God, and the only person who could go past that curtain was the high priest, and he could only go there once a year. And that curtain was torn in two, and that's pretty meaningful to me. We have then, my friends, complete freedom to go into the most holy place by means of the death of Jesus. He opened for us a new way, a living way, through the curtain, that is, through his own body. We have a great priest in charge of the house of God. So let us come near to God with a sincere heart and a sure faith, with hearts that have been purified from a guilty conscience and with bodies washed with clean water. Let us hold on firmly to the hope we profess because we can trust God to keep his promise. Let us be concerned for one another and help one another and love one another and show love by doing good. Again, that talks about the curtain. Let us give thanks to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, for in our union with Christ, he has blessed us by giving us every spiritual blessing in the heavenly world. And that union with Christ is only possible because of the curtain being split in two, which was Christ's body dying on the cross. Even before the world was made, God has already chosen us to be his through our union with Christ, so that we would be holy and without fault before him. Because of his love, God had already decided that through Jesus Christ, he would make us his children. God is the king of the world. I'm a princess, so are many of you, and some of you are princes because we are the children. This was, the, this was his pleasure and purpose. Let us praise God for his glorious grace, for the free gift he gave us in his dear son. For by the blood of Christ, we are set free. That is, our sins are forgiven. How great is the grace of God. But you are a chosen race, the king's priests, the holy nation. We're the people who are the king's priests. We're the ones that are right up close to God. We are God's own people, chosen to proclaim the wonderful acts of God who called you out of the darkness into his own marvelous light. At one time you were not God's people, but now you are his people. At one time you did not know God's mercy but now you have received his mercy. May you always be joyful in your union with the Lord, and I say it again, rejoice. And that's where our joy comes from. Is it all stems back to Christ's death. Let us pray. Dear God, thank you for your plan for us, and thank you for, for sending Christ, and thank you for for his death on the cross, and thank you, Jesus, for going through that death on the cross. And thank you that that death brought us to union with God and union with Christ and with union with both of you. And, and thank you for, for this opportunity that we have to partake and take of Christ's body and to take of his blood and, and to take him more so into us each day and to be more and more transformed to be like you. In Jesus' name, amen. And you may take the bread and the wine. Thank you, God, for this time together. Thank you for the music you've given us for the words prepared by Don and Rhonda, and for the hearts of those gathered here and scattered around the world. We celebrate together with all your holy people Jesus' victory over sin in the grave. We thank you for his life, our example, his death, our salvation, and his resurrection, our hope. We ask that you bring us alongside of what you have planned. We ask you to show us what you have in mind and use our gifts and how our gifts, abilities, and blessings can be put to work in your service. Deliver us from Satan and what his power would have us do. Give us victory over anything that doesn't come from you. Empower us this week to be bold ambassadors of your love to a world that needs you so desperately. 
If it is your will, O God, bring us back together here or in the world you are making new. In Christ's risen and mighty name we pray. And all God's people said, Amen. Have a great week, everybody. Thanks for watching or listening. The Beamsville Church of Christ meets at 4900 John Street, Beamsville, Ontario. We are currently holding in-person services following provincial COVID-19 regulations. Scripture quotations marked NIV, taken from the Holy Bible, New International Version, NIV, copyright 2011 by Biblica Inc., used by permission, all rights reserved worldwide. Scripture quotations marked GNT are from the Good News Translation in today's English version, second edition, copyright 1992 by American Bible Society, used by permission. You can find out more about the congregation on our Facebook page or at beamsvillechurchofchrist.ca.